Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning back in. I'm going to cover really quickly here a video on identifying the size of seals. When you don't have a breakout, like in a parts fish or something, to replace a particular seal. This all came about because this is the water pump off the VFR. And I, you know, when I take these things apart and I set them aside, I put them in bags. I think I mentioned that before in, a, in an initial teardown video. And then what I do is I pull them out. Uh, as time goes on and I take them and I you know restore them clean them up paint them well I pulled this out the other day and the seal there's supposed to be one right there this is actually that seal these seals go in this way and I'll talk about that here in a minute this seal was actually sitting cattywampus to the to the to the place that it's pressed into and th these should never move especially on a water pump like that never move there was no evidence of any coolant that had gotten past this uh, bearing and seal pack that's inside here. I think it's a kind of a bigger long thing that goes in there. I've never taken one of these apart, but that's really not what's important. What's important is I took a look at this seal and I figured I'd replace it. Glancing at the parts fish, as I said, there is no uh, breakout for it, so we can't replace the seal, uh, you know, separately, at least off of the Honda website, you know, for parts fish. But you can read these seals as to the seal number. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, which is what I want to cover in this video, how to identify the seal size. And that way you can look for it online and just replace it outright, you know, from a separate source. So if you look right there, that is the water pump on the parts fish. That O-ring is the O-ring that seals it off to the engine case. I have that, no problem, but there is no breakout for the seal on the back side of the water pump. So that would be like a shaft seal. And again, that separates the oil side from the coolant side. All right, so now we're looking at the business side of this seal. This is the one that came out of the water pump. Now these, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about how to remove these. So if you have something that's installed properly and you need to dig it out, that's a whole nother video. But once you have the seal out and you need to read it, this is what I want to cover in this video. So let's take a look at this. There's a whole slew of numbers on this thing. You got an eight, a nine, maybe an SD, that's numbers and letters actually, then a 12, a 28, a 7, and dash 1, then an HS or H5. So these smaller seals in particular are kind of problematic because everything's crammed into a very small area. So how do you determine what's the seal size? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these and say, what's the most likely candidates? There's going to be three numbers. The first number is going to be the seal ID, or it would be the OD of what the seal is slipping over. The second number is going to be the seal overall OD, and the third number is going to be the seal width. Now that's always the case on these metric seals. I've never seen one that's set up differently. So again, that's essentially the hole size, the seal size, and the seal thickness. So let's take a look. Right now I look at this one and I say, I think that the numbers are 12, 28, and 7, and these are all in millimeters, because that's the most likely candidate. You know, you got a 7, and where is it there? You got a, or rather an 8, and you got something else and something else, but, you know, it's, it's just not, doesn't jive on this one. So we take a look at that 12, 28, 7, and to verify all we do is we take a metric rule, and you hold it up to it, and you go, is the inside 12 millimeters? and it about is, is the overall about 28 millimeters, and it about is, and the width is about 7 millimeters. So that's the size of this seal. The size of the seal is a 12, 28, 7. I don't know what the dash 1 means. Usually I think that refers to the number of lips, but this is a double lip seal. you got one on one side and one on the other, so I, uh, I don't really know why that's there, but who knows? could be a manufacturing thing. So I went online and I ordered, I found this on eBay. It's a, it's the same size seal. This is numbered just a little differently, uh, but you can still see it is a, there it is. It's a 12, 28, seven. This is an NOK. That's Norma Oscar Kilo NOK seal. These are Japanese seals made in Japan. So they're good seals. And this is what I'll be using to replace the one I just showed you. Now on bigger seals, it's a little easier because you got more real estate there. But let's take a look at this one here. 
and let's see if we can find it. Oh, there we go. Uh, this one you can see is a 25, a 60, and a 10. So the 25 is going to be 25 millimeters is what one inch, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to measure it with this. So 25. Yep, right, almost right on the money. If you can look straight down there, it's 25 millimeters. And then the second number was uh, 60 and 60 millimeters and then 10 for the width. So there you go, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's actually not too hard to do. Um, and that way you can kind of decipher which seal that you need to order. You can go to your local seal distributor or a seal, uh, you know, point of sale location if you happen to have one. We have one. I'm lucky to have one down in Sarasota called Bearings Marketing. They do bearings and seals, and they almost have everything that I ever need. So if I need something right now, and I even if it's like a wheel bearing seal or something off a motorcycle, I just take the seal number off it, bring the seal down with me. He usually measures it with his uh, uh, metric calipers to verify, and then we just I walk out of there with new seal or seals. So where this goes again on this water pump, typically a seal would be installed like this because you'd have uh, you know it depends on what's designed for. The seal is designed on this side to prevent things from going that way, okay? And so what this seal is designed for, and I know for a fact that this is installed this way designed to go this way because I'm pretty sure the Imagineers decided that they want to keep the coolant out of the engine oil at all costs. So this would mean that this would be the barrier side or the, or the side of the seal they want to put toward what they're trying to restrain. So this seal goes on that way and then gets pressed in. I had another one of these water pumps, a spare for the Magna, and I think it may have been bad I threw it away. If I had that I could show you that these things are mounted this way. I'll be putting a new seal on. I'll be putting the seal on at a later time. Really quick on installing these. You can see that this is the notch that matches up to where this pump is driven um, off the engine. And this edge is pretty sharp. In fact, it's very sharp. So what we don't want to do is just shove the seal on. It'll end up cutting the lips. I guarantee you that. Guarantee. So really what you need to do is cover those up temporarily to put the seal on. And what I use for that usually is just a piece of heat shrink like this. Just uh, put it on, I'll cut it shorter of course, hit it with just a little bit of heat with the heat gun um, just to tighten it up. And then you slip the seal over that, then you pull it off and you're golden. So definitely don't slip these things over like that. Like I said, you're going to cut them. You can use tape, like the real fine tape, the thin tape at the auto parts store you can get for... If you need to like uh, do paint lines and very sharp paint lines, that works really well too. But this um, this works, I think, the best. So yeah, just don't shove it over or shove it because you'll cut it. And when you shove it in and you cut it, that's always a bad day. I'm going to use Loctite 515, which is a good Loctite material to restrain seals like this in a bore. So hope this wasn't a bore to you. If you liked it, like the video, ring the bell on the channel, and subscribe. And you see more of this stuff in the future. And remember, guys, don't just repair, restore. Catch you on the next one, and thanks for watching.